Turnstile jumping in New York City. People do it every single day. You know, another word for turnstile jumping is stealing, and the Manhattan DA doesn't want to prosecute anyone for it, so much so that now a bunch of politicians in New York, state senator, members of the assembly, they want to decriminalize it. So first we hear about the decriminalization of urinating in public. Now they want to make the theft of service legal in New York because of some sob story about people that can't afford to ride the subway. So why don't we just let them steal from the rest of us? I think it's absurd. Not only should they be prosecuted, but fines, maybe even jail time for repeat offenders. Diana, you're chasing this story. What do you got? Right, Bill. Well, there are a lot of ways to beat the 275 fare on New York City subways, and guardian angel Curtis Sliwa has seen them all. They're like Hulk Hogan. They're listening for the train to come into the station. And then all of a sudden, the number one method of evading the fare is they go under. So they do the Australian crawl. They go down underneath like this. Ooh, 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 ooh. And then they surface, and they go bye-bye, bye-bye, and they run to the train. Since the 1990s, the NYPD has used these arrests as a cornerstone of their policing. But could that be coming to an end? As you pointed out, the Manhattan District Attorney is no longer prosecuting these individuals. And this is as two Brooklyn lawmakers look to decriminalize the act altogether. But the push to decriminalize fair evasion is gaining steam. Uh, State Senator Jesse Hamilton, who is behind this bill, says that these arrests really just target low-income, non-white New Yorkers. A criminal record of a misdemeanor uh, so they can't be productive in society makes no sense. Let's take resources and put them on the front end to get these children out of trouble. New Yorker Colleen Armstrong agrees. Uh, 15 years ago, she was in her early 20s and arrested for fair evasion, but she says it was really just an honest mistake when she used a student ID rather than uh, an MTA ticket to get on the subway. I felt like I was being targeted, and to be honest, I felt like they had a quota that they had to meet. Currently, those arrested face a $100 uh, fine for fair evasion, and they spend one day in jail. The number of arrests uh, over the past four years has actually declined 19%. So what's Senator Jesse Hamilton looking to do? Well, he wants to uh, have it be handled as a civil matter by the MTA's Adjudication Bureau. All right, uh, thank you, Diane. I want to bring in our panel. We're joined by Serena DeMasso. Uh, you are a freeholder in Monmouth County. Jeanette Hoffman, thanks for joining us. You're a political strategist. Thanks, Bill. And uh, you and I have had some interesting conversations over the years. Good to have you here. And Mike Donovan, welcome back. I'm happy to have you here, Mike. You, uh, you are uh, part of the Nexus uh, Services Foundation, and your main focus is giving undocumented immigrants free legal service. That's exactly right. All right, all right so let me start with you. You're already giving away the store to people. So <laughs> That's my how, money. <laughs> so tell me how this makes any sense. I mean, I hear low-income, non white people are being targeted. Maybe that's because low-income non-white people are the ones that have a higher percentage of jump in the turnstile. Well, I think that, first of all, I think we can all agree, I think we should all agree, that you don't put people in jail for this, particularly first-time offenders. So, first-time person jumps the turnstile. I, 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 I don't agree. agree. That you didn't agree I don't actually agree. I think it ought to be 30 days in jail. But you should agree, because oh that's insane. And the cost to the taxpayer to lock these people up, it doesn't even make sense. Like, it, on its face, that idea, with all due respect, is insane. Like, we would spend so much more money, 100, 120 bucks a day, to lock a person up who didn't pay a $2 fare. I think we gotta get a lot smarter. Serena, that sounds like the typical soft on crime. Let's feel sorry for you because uh, you're a person of color and maybe you were targeted. Uh, all I hear is fair jumping is legal. Uh, well, to me, um, in Monmouth County, to get to work, these people pay close to $600, $700 a month to get to work. So. You know, it's really tough to, for me to say to somebody else, you don't have two dollars and seventy-five cents, and you're saying you're going to work. Yeah, do you agree with that? I mean, or, well, well, yeah. And, and what about my proposal? Thousand-dollar fine, thirty days in jail. I'll bet you Bill. cut turnstile jumping in half. All right, the punishment needs to fit the crime yeah, here. Uh, you're a little crazy wanting to put people in jail for turnstile jumping. That being said, I but mean, why not theft of service? It is, it is totally it's a service. theft of service. Not. What's the difference? Punishment right. should fit the crime, and it is a crime. I mean, somebody needs to pay for our subway system. It should be the people who ride the subways. Absolutely. Number two, prosecuting low-level quality-of-life crimes is really important in New York City. 
You and I remember the 80s. I mean, I'm not as old as you, Bill, but you know, in the 1980s. Yeah, I knew it would get personal at some point. In the 1980s, the subway in New York City was the most dangerous place. Do you agree to with this? I, I, Do you agree I, with this quality I, of life? Because I'll give you an example. In New Jersey, it happens. In Newark, I, you've got a liberal black mayor, Ross Baraka, who's got his public safety director doing quality of life arrests. I mean, they're sweeping through, and you know what? I've walked the streets, I've talked to people, people like it. Why not go back to broken windows and Rudy Giuliani? Well, that was a guy that cleaned it, up that city. Yeah, I'm confused because I would think conservatives would want to put less people in jail, but it seems like you want to put more people in jail, and that doesn't make any sense. You want to take the government, make it stronger, make it bigger, so that it can incarcerate more people and take their rights away. That doesn't sound conservative to me. That sounds fascist. I mean, a conservative liberal, I think these labels are out the window. This is about I, I quality of life. It's about um, it's about uh, peace and security and opportunity. And I don't understand how letting somebody get away with a theft of service uh, help. It hurts everyone. Rudy Giuliani arrested people for turnstile jumping, for public urination, for vandalism. Right. And it created a lawful, orderly subway system, neighborhoods and streets. The point is broken windows. You brought up. Right. They, they, if, to define that for people that don't know, you're talking about going after the very, very small crimes which lead to bigger crimes. I mean, I look at it this way. You know, you got to go to work every day that the whole fabric of society gets corroded, gets infected when people are allowed to break the law because at the right, end of the day, them to my, the that this guy walking them through to the turnstile, paying his fee, carrying his right, briefcase, absolutely. going to work. He's paying the bills. Guys, listen, I got to wrap up. Stick around. I want to have you back after the break.